welcome to Hindustan Foods Limited Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. The statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Samir Kothari, Managing Director, Hindustan Foods Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rutuja. Good morning and welcome everybody for our Q3 and 9 month FY23 earnings conference call. I am joined on the call by Mr. Mayank Samdani, who is our group CFO, Bankim Purohit, who is our company secretary and is attending the investor call for the first time. Welcome, Bankim. And SGA, our investor relations advisor. Ganesh Algikar, our executive director, and Vimal Solanki, our head of corporate communications, couldn't join today's call as both decided to take a holiday just today and leave us to do their work. I hope everyone has had a chance to go through their updated earnings presentation uploaded on the exchange and our company website. Coming to the quarter's performance, I am pleased with the overall performance of the company in the last nine months, and more specifically, I am pleased with the ramp up of the ice cream facility and the beverage facility in the last quarter of this year should really help us close this year with a record turnover. This, in spite of the tepid SNCG demand in the last few quarters, is a testament to the resilience of our business model and gives us confidence that as and when volume growth returns to the SNCG industry, we should be able to leverage this and grow at a faster clip. While most of our, factors, uh, most of our factories reported stable operations, we are looking forward to the ice cream and the beverages factory ramping up in the coming season. After the expansion of the ice cream project in Lucknow, which is slated to start commercial production uh, in March 23, we will now be amongst the largest manufacturers of ice cream in the country and are excited in exploring other opportunities in the manufacturing of ice cream. On the back of all of this, I'm confident that our earlier goal of 4,000 crores turnover by FY25 looks easily achievable, and we will come back to you in terms of the further guidance. The reason we are not able to give you a definitive guidance now is because in the last quarter, we made our largest acquisition ever, and we are still working on the various regulatory requirements to close this transaction. Since it was the largest transaction ever for us, I would like to spend a couple of minutes explaining the rationale of this acquisition. We recently executed a BTA, a business transfer agreement for the acquisition of a pharmaceutical, non-pharmaceutical and wellness product factory from Rekit Ben Kiza, further expanding our healthcare and wellness division. This manufacturing facility is in Baddi, Himachal Pradesh, and it manufactures a vast variety of pharma and non-pharma products like OTC medicines, ointments and creams, strips, liquid syrup, uh, tablets, liquid hand wash, plasters. It's a state-of-the-art facility with modern machinery and also has certifications uh, of US FDA and MHRA. We are proposing to acquire this undertaking at a cash consideration of 156 crores, which will be subject to certain closing adjustments uh, in accordance with the conditions set in the BTA. We are acquiring this manufacturing facility on a going concern basis, and we expect to enter into a long-term supply agreement for this site with our customer. As per our terminology, this would make this site an anchor tenant site where the long-term production commitment from our customer will help secure a certain minimum capacity utilization for the site while we'll be open and allowed to leverage the free capacity for other customers. Presence of the global certification that I mentioned earlier allows the facility to manufacture multiple products for international use. While we are very optimistic about this acquisition, we are also aware of the complexity and the nuances involved in integrating such a large operation 
and are working hard to ensure that this is a smooth integration. In the meantime, I will hand over the call to Mayank Samdani, our group CFO, to take you through the financial results for the quarter ending 31st December 2022. Hello, good morning everybody. It has been a stable quarter as far as the financial performance is concerned. For Q3 FY23, revenue stood at 679 crores, a growth over 29% over last year, while the EBITDA for the quarter has seen a growth of 50% year on year, and it stood at 45 crores as against 30 crores last year. The PET has also correspondingly grown by more than 45% to rupees 17 crores as against 11.7 crores. As far as the nine-month performance is concerned, our total revenue has increased by 32.9% on y on y basis to rupees 19.41 crores, while PET has grown 56% to 50, 51 crores. EPS for the nine months stood at 4.51 versus 2.90 last year. Our quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth was muted as all the existing factories have been performing at the stable capacities, while the ice cream and the beverage facility has lean season. We expect these two facilities to start delivering from this quarter and are beginning to see some traction in these numbers. As on December 31, 2022, our net worth stands at 55 crores. Gross block as on 31st December stood at 754 crores on account of consolidation. In terms of CapEx, we closed the acquisition of RB Shawl and paid the entire amount to the sellers and also a major part of ice cream expansion CapEx have been paid. We also paid some advance for the Buddy acquisition and are also in process of acquiring some land in Hyderabad close to our factory. We reinstate our near-term and long-term targets for revenue and profitability as we continue to focus on accelerating growth through exploring organic and inorganic opportunities. With this, we have also remained focused on strengthening our balance sheet and cash flow through effective capital management, which would facilitate us for further growth. With this, I would like to open the floor for the questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Akar Zaveri from Perpetual Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, Samir, uh, and th thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations uh, on the quarter. Uh, my first question would be that um, what would be the gross block uh, post the CAPEX and the current gross block given in the investor presentation, does it include all the acquisitions? Hi, good morning, Akash. Uh, thank you for coming in. I'm going to ask Mayam to answer this question. Uh, the gross block given in the investor which is 754 crore Akash is as on 31st December 2022 with all CWIP. The new acquisition which we have talked, Samir has talked about the Baddi which is not included in here. We will include one that we close the deal and we uh, we take over the uh, um, facility. Okay, got it. And um, the new Rekhid Bank is a plant um, at uh, Baddi. What is the current capacity utilization of the plant? The current capacity utilization of cash will be close to around 60 or percent. Okay, and what kind of ROC and margin uh, to expect uh, for, from the rest of the capacity? From the rest of the capacity, we basically evaluate uh, uh, the project uh, on a similar basis like anchor tenants. So given that the, the guidance in terms of margins as well as ROE is pretty much similar to our existing business, Akash. I mean, it's too early for us to get into the exact specifics. Because as you are aware, the balance 40% is something that we will have to go out and get customers for. Given that it is pharma and given that it is USFDA and MHRA approved uh, site, we expect to have better margins. But frankly, I would be uh, very, very reluctant to give any guidance right now because uh, we have no idea of, of how quickly we'll be able to find the uh, new customers and what kind of product we'll be able to get uh, with them. Sure. And how much um, land is available like, you know, around the plant, so if you want to expand in the future? And have we already taken control of the business yet? 
so the first question is in terms of the further expansion. I, I frankly personally don't see us building any new capacities in Bhatti. As you are aware, uh, Bhatti is a, 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 was a tax-free, uh, uh, excise-free uh, zone. I don't see us expanding capacity there. We will utilize our existing capacity and the free capacity that we have. Though we do have excess of land there, I'm not sure that's, that's, that's the play that we're looking at. Uh, in terms of taking control, no, absolutely. And uh, we have not taken control, and that's the reason why we are reluctant to give any kind of guidance in terms of our turnovers, etc. Uh, as you are aware, in Himachal, there's a, uh, uh, there's a legal process uh, where uh, acquisition of industrial land requires state government permissions. Uh, we are in the process of getting those. Our past experience of running factories in Himachal is that it could take anywhere between six to eight months, uh, and that's what we are looking at. Sure. And uh, from this business, uh, do we expect to get, uh, sorry, from this uh, factory, do we expect to get business uh, from regulated markets as well? Uh, that's the idea, Akash, absolutely. I mean, considering that it's an MHRA and USFDA uh, uh, approved site, uh, it also already is supplying to regulated markets. Uh, so some of the product categories which Racket Benkiza is manufacturing in this site are exported to the U.S. Uh, as well as to Europe. Uh, that business will obviously continue, uh, and we are hoping to be able to attract some additional business as well. But uh, all of these are OTC pharma products, so they are not... Uh, so this is similar to the Dr. Shaw range that we are manufacturing in IGK. So these are products which are sold over the counter. They are not ethical or prescription uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. Sure. And uh, how are we scaling the Shoal uh, plant? How are we scaling? We have no complaints as of now. Things are working out fine. We have integrated the site. Operations have continued. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, we've been able to successfully uh, do the integration without disrupting any production for our customer. As you're aware, uh, the customer themselves are in the process of transitioning from Racket to Shawl Wellness Company. Uh, they have also now recently started a, a, a partnership, a JV, with an Indian company, and they intend to launch those products in India as well. Uh, so. Uh, Long and short of that answer is we are quite uh, enthusiastic about how things are uh, rolling out at uh, uh, IGK. So, and um, uh, if you could just uh, um, tell us about the current debt situation. Thanks. Our current debt is around, uh, our debt situation is, is comfortable. Our car, we are at 1.15, between 1.15 to 1.2 debt equity ratio. So right now it is very comfortable. We have 400 crores of debt in, in books right now. So right now it is very comfortable and we are dealing with SBCS and all those banks which is very good record. Got it. And uh, are we looking at any um, you know bigger opportunities like Coca-Cola recently said that they're looking to divest their bottling operations. So are we looking at you know those kind of opportunities? So Akash, without getting into the specifics of anything, of course we are looking for opportunities. I mean, uh, if, if, if you and I know that you have followed the company, uh, that's what we do for a living. We basically look out for manufacturing assets, and we are extremely keen in uh, looking at contract manufacturing capabilities across uh, FMCG products. So we will continue to do that absolutely. So and uh, also with um, you know you had mentioned in 2021 about opportunities in pet food. So any progress uh, on the same? So on the pet food, we we actually worked on a private label uh, brand. It's very very small. It's a D two C company. We expect to start production for it, uh, but frankly, it's going to be a rounding of error in terms of the overall uh, uh, financial numbers. Uh, the category by itself did grow uh, rapidly during COVID or post-COVID. Uh, it's uh, the numbers, and, and that's true like uh, most of the FMCG market, the numbers have kind of cooled down since then. Uh, while we were extremely bullish about the pet food category in, uh, uh, let's say, a year ago, uh, the, uh, the enthusiasm for that has definitely reduced in the market, and correspondingly, the enthusiasm for that manufacturing capacity has reduced uh, from our customers as well. Got it. Uh, and just one last question, if I can squeeze in, that uh, you know, now that FMCG volumes 
uh, seems to have bottomed out and with the trend round inflation coming down and everyone seeing rural turning the corner uh, do we see a strong um, yield pipeline and are we looking at any major uh, greenfield care packs so we continue to look at it uh, your your assessment about the fmcg market and uh, uh, the uh, the imminent turnaround of the fmcg market uh, is what we all are uh, banking on uh, right now i'm not sure uh, we are actually seeing action on the ground to back that statement or to back that turnaround uh, but all of us are hoping that things will start improving in the next couple of months as uh, so if you've seen the commentary of most of our customers as well uh, rural frankly continues to be stressed uh, most of our customers have uh, voiced in their investor calls etc uh, saying that rural demand continues to be stressed uh and uh, uh, we are hoping that things will change uh, sooner rather than later sure thank you so much amir uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions we really appreciate it uh, all the best uh, for the next quarter and rest of the year thank you akash thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question you may press star and 1 the next question is from the line of akhil parekh from centrum broking please go ahead Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, many congratulations to the entire team for uh, delivering a good set of numbers. Uh, so, my first question is to you. In past, you had highlighted that going ahead, you know, as we scale up, we will try to specialize more and more. And you had highlighted few examples of some cosmetic players in Italy, and the kind of work they have been doing, and probably Hindustan foods also will. kind of uh, shape around in a similar line but now given the acquisition a uh, recent acquisition of a bubbly facility uh, we are also going to start manufacturing pharma products so if you can throw some light or color on you know like how do you see uh, company shaking shaping up uh, in next 3 to 5 years uh, will we continue to manufacture uh, anything and everything or will we will we take the specialization route going ahead that's my first question <clears throat> Yeah. Akhil, I, what, uh, hi, good morning. Uh, what I had mentioned and what I would like to reiterate is that I think for the next couple of years, at least two to three years, we will continue to see this kind of disproportionate growth for us across product categories. And right now, uh, given the growth and given the opportunities that we are getting, uh, I really don't see us being choosy about it. I did mention that maybe in the medium term, which is between three to five years. uh there will be a requirement where contract manufacturers will have to start specializing in particular categories or in terms of particular products uh, however i don't see that happening in the next few years uh, so to give you a short answer in the next couple of years we will continue to pursue opportunities agnostic of any product categories agnostic of location uh, so i i did mention in my opening remark we are very uh, aggressively trying to look at ice creams uh, we think that there's a huge opportunity for manufacturing ice creams in the country uh, this otc pharma uh, we actually spoke about it i think more than a year ago uh, we realized that otc pharma products uh especially uh cosmetics with a therapeutic claim uh is becoming a large category uh, and that's why we wanted to get into it we managed to get a couple of acquisitions lined up uh which we believe will serve us in good stead uh in the next couple of years uh, in addition to that we 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 spoken about beverages uh while unfortunately the beverage experiment for us hasn't worked out in the last couple of years uh, we are very confident that uh in the next couple of years the beverage experiment will work out for us uh, so we will continue to look at at various product categories uh at some point of time opportunities will start dwindling down uh, and at that time we will definitely look at at specialization or uh, even look at uh, splitting the company into uh, three product categories or whatever is required sure so this is helpful so does that imply that you know the cro uh, uh Uh, might be at least three five years uh, far from now at this point of the time. Uh, the custom research you have talked about, right, in past. I mean, all I can say, Akhil, is that that uh, I, like I, I was talking to Akash earlier. Uh, we are hoping that the FMCG growth in terms of volumes will bounce back sooner rather than later. 
and uh, given the overall trend and shift towards contract manufacturing combined with a decent volume growth uh, would allow us to be able to grow at similar rates for some more time yet. Okay, okay fair enough. And second one is Babbi acquisition. Uh, uh, did I hear correctly you said the margin profile and ROE, ROCs are in line to what we are doing right now? So in case of uh, the margin profiles, uh, given that they are pharma products, especially for the excess capacity, so beyond the anchor tenant, we expect that the margins will be better. But that, as, as, as you uh, would uh, appreciate, uh, is true for any of our, our businesses, right? When you get into shared manufacturing or anchor tenant models, uh, mm. the margins, etc., tend to be better. Uh, this one is slightly more sweetened uh, because the complexity of the product, uh, both in terms of regulations as well as manufacturing processes, as well as uh, GMP, hygiene, etc., at the factory, are slightly more sophisticated than some of the other products that we make. Okay, and how do we plan to you know, increase the bandwidth for this product? Because I'm assuming this is something new which we'll be doing. Uh, uh, how are we trying to increase the bandwidth from the employee perspective? So from the top management perspective, as you'll be aware, uh, uh, Sanjay and his team joined us nearly a year ago. So in fact, uh, we, we built up the team uh, maybe a little in advance, uh, but we've been working on this for nearly a year and a half now. Uh, Sanjay uh, joined us, uh, I forget the exact date, but I think it's nearly a year and a half. Uh, and since then, he's built up his team. Uh, but more importantly, both in case of IGK as well as Bhatti, uh, the uh, agreement with the seller is that the existing team, uh, employees, as well as the senior management team at the site uh, does join us. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the integration of IGK has been uh, 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 so smooth for us. Uh, because it's the same people uh, who were there earlier who are continuing to manage the operations. Okay, okay. This This last two questions. Uh, one, if you can highlight the asset terms from this unit, from the W unit, and whether the sales from this unit is part of our 4,000 crore uh, target, or is it, it, does it exclude that? Okay, you're going to have to repeat the question, Mr. Mayer, because then you were distracted. <laughs> no worries. I'm asking the asset terms on this new unit, the W unit, and second is whether this this is a part, the sales from this unit is part of our uh, uh, 4,000 crore sales target that we have given. So, uh, until the, the asset terms will be same as we are doing between three to four, we, we, we tend to uh, believe that. And uh, as Samir has mentioned in his opening speech that uh, uh, we are very confident of uh, our 4,000 crore target and and uh, also upwards to it because of these uh, this acquisition. So we will we will come back on the uh, right moment to uh, guide further on this because. It, this this uh, uh, acquisition will take another six to eight months to complete, you know, because of the various regulatory processes involved in it. Okay, okay, sure. Am I to highlight on the effective tax rate in FI24 if we can? Before we move on to the tax rate, I just want to shed some more light on Mayank's question, right? Sure. So I think uh, Mayank and, and, and we as management are a little reluctant to give out uh, the guidance in view of the fact that we do believe that there is some stress in terms of the SMCG volume growth. Uh, I think all of our customers have gone on record saying that uh, it, it definitely will affect uh, the plans uh, for new capacity expansion, etc. While we, and because of our business model, we've been relatively shielded from it. Uh, we've continued to grow, uh, but we don't want to be in a situation where we end up overcommitting to the market and then find out that just because of macroeconomic conditions or because of certain things which are completely out of our control, uh, we end up falling on our face. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you recollect in our last couple of investor calls, we had given the glide path of uh, where we were last year, which was around 2,000 crores. Uh, we had projected that uh, on the back of the ice cream facility, we should end up this year with around 2,600 odd crores. Uh, I think we are very close to that number. We should uh, stick to that guidance. Uh, I think for nine months, uh, we have done a sales of around uh, 1950, uh, and we should uh, definitely be able to uh, uh, exceed this quarter's performance in the next quarter. That's what I said in my opening remarks as well, so which should get us to around 2,600, 2,700 crores of turnover. Uh, the so far project in Hyderabad, 
uh, will start operations from the next quarter uh, and which should effectively give us, uh, starting from Q1 uh, or maybe late Q1 of next financial year, uh, we should be at an annual run rate of 3,000 plus. So uh, we've given that guidance earlier, uh, and then we've said that we have a bunch of things in the pipeline, which of course now includes Bhatti, uh, which was not uh, uh, there that time. Uh, so while we are reasonably confident that we should be able to meet the goals that we have mentioned, uh, we are a little reluctant to give you a tangible financial number for it. Sure, sure. Uh, but this is helpful. This is helpful. And, and lastly, if you can please answer on the effective tax collecting in next year, please. Yeah. So, uh, Kil, as you are aware that our current effective tax, tax we are at a maximum effective tax rate currently in, in standalone, but uh, our tax rate is little uh, lesser in uh, the console because uh, of the, uh, the ice cream plant is in is in the new scheme, and also the uh, arrow care is at, at is at uh, mat mat level. Uh, going this year, we are, we will utilize our all the mat credits in the standalone. And next next year we will we will jump to the new the the effective tax the the lower tax rate of 22% plus surcharge. So our effective tax rate will come down from 32-33% in control level to 28-29, 28 29% Got it, got it. Uh, this is very helpful, and I'm uh, uh, wishing you all uh, best luck for coming quarters. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Hari from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, so just uh, had two questions. Uh, you know, one was on uh, uh, the uh, on the buddy unit. Uh, you mentioned in the presentation, you know, the opportunity to cater to new clients and you can manufacture uh, a wine range of products. Uh, if you could just give some sense uh, without obviously naming, uh, you know, what 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 could uh, be potential bad partnerships, but if you could just give a sense of, you know, uh, you know, what is the opportunity that uh, sits there uh, in the spare capacity that you can uh, you know, you can work on? Uh, yeah, that's my first question. Uh, so the Bati unit, in terms of the product capabilities, it manufactures uh, a large uh, volume of topical ointments, etc. Uh, as you are aware, in our presentation, we mentioned that it manufactures uh, products like crack cream, move cream, etc. And uh, uh, we continue to uh, uh, leverage that capacity uh, for other people. So we have uh, some spare capacity in the ointment section. We also manufacture lozenges. Uh, we have some spare capacity in the lozenges. Uh, lozenges uh, uh, in fact, actually, we don't have spare capacity in the lozenges. The lozenges capacity is completely spoken for uh, by our existing uh, customer. Uh, we have some spare capacity in uh, uh, tablets, as I mentioned, uh, in ointments, uh, and in liquids. Got it, got it, got it. And, uh, and the second thing was on the ice cream, uh, you know, parts of me. So, you know, if you look at... Uh, the Sorry, Harit, just one second, uh, Mayak is, is nudging me. So, I, I mentioned this earlier, that, that in terms of total capacity utilization in Bhatti, it's around 60%. So, uh, we have a headroom of, of nearly 20-25% uh, in terms of uh, uh, excess capacity. Correct, correct, correct. I can't break it up in terms of product categories, but on a, on a rated average basis, that's the kind of uh, idle capacity that we have in Bhatti. Got it, got it. Uh, the second thing was on, on the ice cream unit. So, you know, you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the 75 core expansion will be commercialized by March 23. So, uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, get a sense of, uh, you know, would you, would this entire, uh, you know, 200 crore be ready for this season uh, completely, or do you think uh, it would be, uh, you know, uh, the full utilization would be more in next season? Just wanted to get that sense from you. So, Harit, the, the first phase of ice cream actually got commercialized last year in April. Right. Uh, right. Unfortunately, by the time the capacity is ramped up, we were at the fag end of the season uh, and we didn't end up uh, utilizing the entire capacity. So the first phase is, is uh, already up and about. Uh, we've started production uh, from uh, something like uh, the first week of February uh, for the season. 
the second phase, which is the expansion of the 75 crores that you're talking about, we are expecting that we will start commercial production by March. It will take about a month or so to ramp up. Uh, so technically, we'll get a decent amount of output from the second phase as well, starting from, let's say, April and May. Uh, and then depending on how the summer pans out, whether the season gets extended till June or not, uh, we'll find out how much of uh, a contribution that new line is able to make. Uh, but the first phase uh, will will run at full blast starting from uh, February uh, to whenever the season ends. Yes, and and last thing you know, mind was uh, you know you didn't mention I think 2600 plus uh, the year you will close at. Uh, but I think it would be fair to assume right that you know Q4 will definitely you know sure ideally be better than Q3 in terms of revenue, given that both ice cream and beverages will will see a, a, a significant ramp up, especially in in towards uh, you know fag end of Feb and March. So that would be the right understanding, right? Sorry, Harit, I I I, I couldn't uh, make out what you were saying. Just can you just repeat that? Yeah, I said that you know you you, you mentioned that uh, you know you will uh, you know Q4 will be similar to slightly better than than Q3 in terms of revenues. But it would be fair to understand that you know uh, the the, the lift off on beverages and on ice cream, uh, both probably towards uh, you know end of Feb and entire March could uh, you know will be incremental to your Q3 performance, right? So you should see a you should see a, a, a you know a, a materially better uh, you know kind of performance in Q4 as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Harris. I mean, uh, obviously, the only reason 